For those who think they're spending more time facing monitors than patients. Who feel that organizing a treatment journey is more complex than the treatment itself. For you, we develop DS Core. DS Core is an interconnected, digital cloud-based platform created to support you throughout the entire patient journey. From image capturing to treatment. In short, one portal, one cloud to connect you, your team, your labs, equipment and services. Managing files without hassle from different devices and software and access them from wherever you are and whenever you need them? Check. Viewing, arranging and annotating in one place, no matter what format? Check. Plus, it makes it so much easier to walk even the most skittish patient through the whole treatment process by showing and sharing files with them. Looking forward to engage with one portal instead of multiple to get one order done? Done indeed! Here is your one-track access to your partner lab and our expert technicians to expand your services. Via phone, via email or even via mail? Trying to find a slot for clarifications over a task? Conversations with your colleagues and lab partners happen now in real time. Easy! No subscription to DS Core is needed for your counterparts. And this is just the beginning. Features and applications are continuously and automatically added to the platform, so you can be confident you're getting the latest in digital dentistry. DS Core works with you, so you can save time and focus even more on what matters most – your patience. Sounds good? Visit us to discover more. Hello and welcome to tonight's live webinar. My name is Jamie Thomas from Dent Spicer UNIK and I'm one of the digital sales specialists. Tonight joining me we have the privilege of Simon Fieldhouse. Simon is a specialist oral surgeon based in Bradford-upon-Avon and has been using Cerit for close to 10 years now. So he's got a fantastic insight to just how this equipment and all these solutions are pieced together and how they work in his practice. We're going to be looking at what Cerit can do in your practice, how it impacts your patients and the practice as well. Take a look at the costings and more importantly, the return of investment as well, which I'm absolutely confident you'll be quite surprised with. And this is a really good uh, segue into, you know, why we do what we do at Dental Supply Serona. So we believe in empowering the dental professionals. We want to give you the best equipment and solutions in your hands so it's going to benefit you, your whole dental team, and of course, your patients as well for better, faster and for safer dentistry. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Simon, who's going to run through his short presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, good evening. Welcome. Um, I'm going to spend about the next 35 40 minutes about talking all the aspects of CEREC that help us in our practice and um, obviously at the end of the presentation there'll be a Q&A section if you have any burning questions I think there's a, a question tab underneath the video player so if you want to know where I bought my shirt or anything like that by all means do ask away so we're going to be talking about CEREC uh, from Dent Supply Serena and all the aspects of it, so patient experience. We're going to be talking about how you interact with the laboratory. We're going to be talking about some of the in-house procedures you can do with it and also how it affects the team and clinicians. Um, and hopefully you'll see how powerful CEREC is. And also, I think you've just seen a video possibly on Dent Supply Serena or DS Core, which is a really exciting new uh, sharing platform, which as you probably know now, is um, cloud-based and that's, that's developing as we speak. Very exciting stuff going forwards. So a little bit of history, forgive me if you already know this. Um, these two guys are actually responsible for CEREC. As it said, they're the first CEREC restoration was actually placed in September 1985, when some of you probably were nothing but a twinkle in your parents' eye. Um, I certainly wasn't, I was quite a lot older than that. Um, but yes, Werner Mormon, Marco Brandestini, um, came up with the concept in the early to mid 80s. Um, and then they published their first paper in 1990. And that's when I first saw it, 1990 in Liverpool. As a student, we had a CEREC 2, which you may have seen in the shot earlier, it was actually on my left here. And at the time I thought, wow, Great concept, but not delivering. But believe me, things have changed. Sterek, 
chair-side economical restoration of aesthetic ceramic. And here you can see the spectrum from the Serec 1 right up to the Prime Scan, which is what I use now, which we'll talk more about later. And the very latest edition is the Prime Scan Connect, which is a sort of laptop version, a portable version of the Prime Scan. And uh, it's been an amazing transformation from back in the mid 1980s to where we are now. So what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about digital dentistry. You can see what the screen is telling you. What is digital dentistry? The use of dental technologies. It incorporates computers and components of computers and it helps us carry out dentistry. We also talk about workflows. As it says there, it's a repeatable pattern of activity enabled by systematic organization. Okay, and as it says there, you can see a workflow there. Making a cup of tea is a workflow. We do workflows every day. Washing your face is a workflow of some description. So we talk about workflows throughout the presentation. That's what a workflow is. Um, we also talk about CAD CAM, computer aided design and computer aided manufacture. So the use of computer systems to design and manufacture stuff. The television you're watching on the computer, the chair you're sitting in, pretty much everything involves CAD CAM these days. So we can make pretty much anything with CAD CAM techniques. And when we're thinking about it, particularly in dentistry, we have computer aided design and manufacture. We talk about subtractive manufacturing. So with the subtractive manufacturing, we have some mills there making a lot of noise and the sound guys getting all flustered. So I've switched it off. You'll see those again later. Okay. He's having a heart attack. The poor man behind the camera is like, oh, anyway, I digress. So controlled machining and material removal. So we're cutting stuff away. More often than not in chair side dentistry, it's from a block. You can see some blocks down there in the bottom right corner of the screen. We'll be talking about that again later, but a really fairly new, my apologies, fairly new side of digital dentistry is the additive manufacturing. And as it says here, it builds objects one layer at a time, bonding them together. So we're talking uh, composite materials. We're talking polymers. Um, very, very exciting. There are some really, really good digital printers out there now. There are 3D printers and dentists. They've been around for years. They weren't very good to start with, very messy. And you've basically got three types, as it says there, SLA, stereolithography, the DLP, the digital light production. There's a couple of examples there. And SLS, selective laser sintering, which we'll have a look at later. That's very exciting. And I mentioned now we've got the prime print from Dentsply Serena, which um, I actually had my head inside one of those last week. And annoyingly, it's very good. So I'm going to have to buy one. But there we are. Never mind. Um, an example of what we can do in dentistry with printers in the practice. We can make aligners. You're even going to be able to make your own dentures soon if you wish. We can certainly make surgical guides and we do a lot of that. You can make temporary crowns or even permanent crowns if you want to use some form of hybrid material. Chrome dentures, you know, we can print metal very easily these days. And of course, we can print full arches now and the prime scan that we use is actually the only digital scanner that's out there that's actually um, able to do accurately full arch scanning. And we do that for our full arch implant cases. Uh, there isn't another scanner out there that you can do that with at the moment. It's not accurate enough. So yeah, and if you want to see a firework display, uh, we're going to talk about making chrome dentures later. But what you can see on the screen now is a video of a SLS printer. And basically the way it works is you have a bowl of dust, which is metal alloy. And then we have a laser literally micro fusing the metal dust. And this is how you manufacture full arches, though you can mill those as well. This is how I have all of my chromes made, printed by my laboratory. And as you can see here, it's printing 160 crowns in three hours. It's quite cool. I don't have a social life, so I could watch this video many, many times, but I won't put you through it. Um, just to give you an idea of how we operate in Bradford and Avon, which for those of you that don't know is in uh, just outside Bath in the West Country. Um, we started with a couple of scanners and a mill, but very quickly we realized we needed more than that because it just worked so well for us. So we now have three prime scans. We have three mills. We have two of what we call the MCXLs, which are bulletproof mills. And we have the new prime mill as well. We have a CBCT scanner. We have three uh, Speedfire 
um, furnaces. We have another furnace as well for different processing. And we've got a digital printer as well. As I said, irritatingly, I'm going to have to buy a prime print, I think. But there we are. Now then, first elephant in the room, myths and reality, okay? Many, many people say, well, yeah, you know, Therac crowns, they fit really well, but they look awful. And there was a time when that was absolutely true. They, you'd look like Snaggletooth. It would fit beautifully, but it would look absolutely terrible. But the reality is these days, and particularly with the very latest scanners, but not just the scanners, the materials we have available to us, we can make really, really good aesthetic and very strong, accurately fitting crowns. We've got a lower right six there. You can see, you can probably just about see the supra gingival margin there. And then we've got some crowns that are on the um, Keep On Seriking Facebook page. If you have absolutely no social life, I would recommend you join that. It, there are some interesting pictures on there for those of us that, as I said before, don't get out much. So we need to can that straight away. You can make fantastic looking crowns, amongst other things, using this system. Uh, obviously, we're going to talk a little bit later about implants. And these are all implant cases I've done. There's a patient, elderly patient who had a four unit bridge there, again, all done digitally. And the gentleman on the top right, we've done upper and lower full arches, uh, fully digital workflows. And very straightforward. We'll go into that a bit more later. So, one of the big sort of barriers we have with um, Therac and the digital thing is people say, well, how's my lab going to feel about this? And I can tell you in all honesty, they're going to feel great about it because you're going to stop sending them terrible impressions. You're going to stop getting models back to trim. I'm sure none of you have ever had to trim a model, but I may have done once or twice throughout my somewhat lengthy career. The reality is if you're sending your laboratory digital impressions, they're going to be very, very happy. So if we look at a workflow and we're going to look at the top part of the screen here. And at the moment we use something called Connect Software. Now with the advent of DS Core, that software will probably disappear because we're doing, uh, well, the, the DS Core is developing so that we can share information that way ultimately. But what you would do is you would do your intraoral scan or your DI, digital impression, We'd put it into our Connect software. We would tell the laboratory what we want to do. We might send them a digital photograph. We might tell them a shade. And then it would go off securely to the laboratory and they would have it in a matter of seconds. And we'll talk about the advantages of that later. And as it says there, they can use in-lab software. They can use ExaCAD. They can use anything. And they will produce stroke manufacture, CAD CAM style. Um, yeah, CAD CAM style. I like that. I'll use that again. CAD CAM style. And then they'll send the device or the prosthesis back to you. And that's a really slick workflow. So, talking of workflows, the first thing that we're starting to introduce in our practice is new patients. We're going to be using the software because, let's be honest, TLS or tooth, uh, sorry, TSL, TLS, that's something else. Tooth surface loss is becoming more and more important to us, isn't it? So one of the things that you might not realise you can do is we can take an intraoral scan and we've got a record of every new patient that comes in. And of course, we don't have boxes and boxes of models in our garage and garden shed because it's all stored digitally. So these are things you can start thinking about. Is tooth surface loss important? It's becoming more important, isn't it? You can also monitor gingival levels and things like that as well. But let's get into the nitty gritty. This is a case. Um, a guy um, came in to see me on a Monday afternoon and he said, Simon, um, I've got a problem with my lower front teeth. I'd never met him before. And um, he said, my son is getting married on Saturday. And I looked, I thought, oh dear. But then I thought, well, we can do this. Now, you could do this in an analog way, but believe me, it wouldn't be so easy. So I got the, uh, my colleagues to ring the lab. I took some digital impressions. I sent them to the lab. They were there within minutes. And a couple of days later, this arrived, a printed denture. Okay, the day after that, we extracted the uh, lower broken teeth and also the lower left one and two were very, very mobile. So they came out and we fitted the denture and he was able to go to his son's wedding um, and smile and also eat. And this was all done within a couple of days digitally. Single visit for the impressions, single visit for the extraction and fit, which is quite impressive. And again, we'll come back to the benefits of doing it um, digitally later. But that gives you an example of what you can do digitally and very, very quickly and very easily. 
Another thing we talked about earlier on, we had the um, selective laser sintering. So I won't play the video again because I find it distracts me, but you can see we've got a chrome denture here that um, has been printed. Now, normally we don't use models because we don't need models because they're printed in one of the SLS printers. Um, but you can see that it was put on a model here just for the photograph. If you consider how many visits you would normally do for a chrome denture, um, I can tell you that we would normally do it in that. Okay, two to three visits. Recently, I was lecturing at one of the dental schools and they said, oh, seven visits for a chrome denture, which is probably more than we would do in practice. But you'd certainly do four, possibly five. And the workflow is very straightforward. Digital impressions, digital registration, shade, all of this information is passed on to your laboratory electronically within a matter of minutes of the patient leaving your surgery. They will then send me back a design of the chrome denture, which I'll look at on WhatsApp on my mobile phone. I'll send a thumbs up or a fabtastic to the guys in the lab. They will then print this. In the early days, we would then do a metal try-in. And if I just go like that, you'll know what I mean. They fit beautifully. They fit absolutely beautifully. And then we would go to finish. Now these days, because we've been doing this for a few years and the guys in the lab are more confident of the workflow, and I am too, simple chrome dentures we will often do in two visits. So we will literally take the impressions, provide the prescription, and then they will send back a finished denture at most three visits. And that's a massive change. And when we're talking about the benefits of doing this digitally and the business side of it, you know, time is really important. And I'll refer to that in detail later. But just to give you an idea, if I'm doing three visits for a chrome denture, I will spend across those three visits no more than 20 minutes with my patients. And I like to talk to them. We talk about their dogs. We talk about rugby because we're in the southwest of England. You know, it's not a question of right, open opening. I'll shut up later on with it. Right, see you. We're not like that. OK, but if I'm spending 20 minutes with that patient, I will tell you what the numbers are with chrome dentures. Um, our lab fees about 500 pounds and we charge 1200 pounds for a nice chrome denture. So 700 pounds net. It's a little bit more to it than that. I appreciate it. 700 pounds net for a 20 minutes work. You do the maths for an hourly rate. It's over 2000 pounds an hour. So who said there's no profit in dentures? It's not all about that, but it demonstrates demonstrates how digital dentistry, without making anything yourself, is very, very efficient, very profitable. And because the impressions are so accurate, things fit beautifully. So what can we do? We can just take some study models. We can have them printed if we wish. And this is just with digital impressions now. Remember, digital impressions only. We are not manufacturing anything. We can have some dentures printed, single visit for the impressions, and then fit. We talked about chrome dentures just now. That's an example of a WhatsApp photograph that the guys send me to approve. We can do full arch cases. Remember, the prime scan, which we use in our practice, is the only one validated for full arch cases. And uh, it's very, very accurate. We can do implant crowns. We'll talk about that in a minute. We can do chrome dentures, which we've talked about. We can do full arch. I've just mentioned that already. We can do more full arch. That's an SLS printed arch. We can do pretty much everything. We can do orthodontics. We use the Shaw Smile system. Again, fully digital workflow. So yeah, we can. We can do pretty much anything. We can even do full dentures digitally. Um, that's what we call a hybrid workflow. Haven't got time to talk about that tonight. But pretty much anything you can think of, we do digitally now. And, and it's a really efficient, nice, easy way of doing it. So again, thinking purely of things we do with our laboratory, you know, what, what, how does it affect your relationship with the lab? As I said, it makes it better. If you look at, on the right hand side of your screen, the opportunities for error. You know, if, you, if you're sending an electronic impression, it's there within seconds. You're transferring electrons or something on you, something magical than an electronic. Um, they're not pouring models. Um, the impressions aren't traveling in the post, so they're not being affected by temperature. Um, I mean, I've never had a model dropped by my lab ever. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're not having a problem with models being dropped. Margins, if you're doing crowns this way, you in the software tell the laboratory where the margin is 
communication is better and certainly the impressions are much easier to interpret. So in terms of the opportunities for error, they are wiped out. In terms of one thing that Densplicer owner, and I don't work for Densplicer owner, but I do applaud their initiative on environmental issues. And if you think about it, we're not, we do not use silicon, we do not use alginate, that's not entirely true. The only thing we're doing with alginate is additions, immediate additions to dentures. We haven't quite, well, we, we know how we can do it digitally, but we're working on that. No postage is involved, nobody's collecting anything, they're not delivering anything. In terms of remakes, we'll talk about remakes particularly with crowns later. Again, I'm sure none of you have ever had to get a crown remade because it doesn't fit or the shade's not quite right. But if you do, doing it digitally, the conversation usually goes along the line of, I'm sure you'll agree the shade's not quite right, have you got half an hour? And most patients say, yeah, I've got half an hour, I can carry on reading Bath Life magazine in the waiting room. And then half an hour later, they've got their crown that's perfect because we've remade it there and then. Uh, we're talking about single visits in a minute, less visits, considerably fewer visits for denture workflows, for Michigan splints, which you can also print in house, no models unless you particularly want them. And if you do have them, the models can be recyclable or biodegradable soybean resins out there now. So, you know, digital dentistry has or is starting to have an impact on the sort of environmental side of dentistry. And I'm sure you'll agree that really matters. So moving on to the in-house part of CIRAC, we sort of talked about the laboratory and the, you can do everything you want with your lab digitally. If you don't want to do in-house production, everything you might do as a dentist, you can do with your prime scan, okay? Um, we talk about single visit dentistry, implants, uh, other restorative procedures, splints and surgical guides. So. For that, I call these the three amigos. We've got the prime scan on the left, we have a prime mill in the middle, and we have the speed fire furnace on the right. Okay, um, and these are the three basic things that you will need to do some in-house production. Okay, uh, and as I said, we have a few of these now. So I always get very excited when I start talking about this, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, but we're gonna go on and look at some workflows. So we imagine a workflow for an occlusal splint, Michigan splint, something like that. Uh, what we would do is we would do a digital impression with the prime scan. We would then export the image to our CAD software, our design software, and we'd design it. And that whole process takes sort of 20 or so minutes. You can see myself and Amy on the right there, and we would be designing the splint. Now, initially, I would always be involved, but this is something that whether you're an associate or a practice owner, my colleagues, dental nurses, we've trained them to manufacture and process things. So when we look at the next part of it, I'm not involved. I am involved in overseeing the design process, most definitely, but I don't do any of the processing at all. Um, in, in simple terms, we use our printer to manufacture the splint once we have um, designed it. And then if you look at something like the prime print, what we call the post-processing is fully automatic. So um, there's no mess. We're not touching things that haven't been cured. We've not got slime on the workbench. There's a little robotic arm in it and all of that is automatic. So there's no touching involved. And then once it's finished, it's polished if we need to do that. And again, I don't actually do any of that. You'll see that it says they're team member. So we've trained the team to do the processing. So that frees me up quite a lot. And we'll talk about that again later when we're talking about crown production. So again, digital workflow, we can produce an occlusal splint in about an hour and a half or so, and then we fit it. And because the impressions are really accurate, they fit really nicely. If we're thinking about crown preparation, um, obviously we're using ceramic materials. We'll talk about some materials in a moment. Um, but traditionally, we do our crown preparation. We take our impressions. We'd make a temporary. We'd wait, wait, hopefully for about two weeks, sometimes three, and we'd fit it. And of course, every single one would look perfect, as I mentioned before, and every single one would fit perfectly. And you'd end up with a crown that fitted nicely. Um, digitally, the crown workflow looks a bit like this. And as it says here, it takes about 60 to 90 minutes. So we do our preparation, a digital preparation. We then do a scan, which is our digital impression. And then I would design the crown or bridge or inlay or onlay, depending on what we're doing. Uh, and then uh, in this case, we would mill the restoration and then we would fit it. 
as it says there, we allow 60 to 90 minutes for that process. Now, when we're looking at the software that we use, there is some artificial intelligence in there, which is a bit scary, but it's very, very effective. And the algorithms in this software are incredibly powerful. And you can see in the middle there, the computer actually decides where it thinks the margin is. And we can then, of course, override that. We can edit it. And then it will come up with a restoration. But again, we can edit that. And sometimes we do. OK. Um, when thinking about materials, as you can see there, about well over 70 percent of the materials used in Europe in terms of the blocks that we use to put in the machine are lithium disilicate. So obviously a world sort of um, leader in that was originally Emacs, which is a very good material. I've used thousands of Emacs blocks, but now I'm using Serec to Sarah, uh, which is an advanced lithium disilicate. It's stronger. It looks better. It's quicker to process. But you can use PMMA, you can use hybrid materials, you can use feldspathic and zirconia. Zirconia tends to be more popular in the USA compared to Europe. It's not as aesthetic, but as you know, it is stronger. But having said that, Tessera has a very similar, 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 very similar strength to the more aesthetic zirconias. You're talking a biflexural strength of about 730 megapascals. Um, whatever that means. And then comparing it to the um, aesthetic zirconias, they're sort of 750 to 800, so it's quite close. So Tessera is a really interesting, very good looking material. So um, this is a scene that I quite enjoy seeing more than one mill running at a time. Uh, a single prime scan can actually control multiple mills. And certainly I'm a very happy bunny when I can hear all three mills running at the same time. It's It's a great to me to hear and see that. Yes, I am that sad. Um, and as I said, the milling time um, takes between five and 30 minutes. It depends on what we're milling. It depends on the size of the restoration. If it's a single crown, you can super fast mill a zirconia crown in five, six minutes. Uh, if it was a bridge, three unit bridge, um, it can take 30 minutes or so. Depends, as I say, on the size, depends on the what we call this, the milling parameters as well. OK, um, now, of course, when all of this is going on, you know, I do the prep, I do the design and then I just hand it all over. We've trained our staff. The girls are absolutely brilliant at processing. We we have a discussion about the aesthetics and we say, oh, well, a little bit of cervical blending here. Let's let's have some cracks. Let's have some incisal. Uh, characterization and the reason we talk about that is because they do it we talk about tints and glazing people sometimes call it staining I always say that's a bad word to use in front of patients but once the actual block and the crown has been milled out of the block we then apply some characterization and we then put it in the furnace and it comes out and looks beautiful and it looks like a tooth um, and you can come up with things that look like this. The top two photographs are very old. I mean, nearly 10 years ago, the upper right central there, you could, the, the ginger V gives it away. But that's not a bad effort for an oral surgeon. You've already seen the other pictures there. Supra gingival margins on the lower molar and some really aesthetic anterior crowns using what we call a low translucency block. The blocks, there are 45 to 50 different blocks out there. Most of us that do this regularly have about four or five blocks in our practice, depending on what we're doing, whether it be a permanent restoration, whether it be an immediate restoration for an implant, something like that. It really depends, but there is a lot of choice. And of course, thanks to our friend, the Prime Scan, they fit very nicely and they also look great because of the choice of materials we have. So what else can we do with Serec in-house? We do, yeah. Most of our single crowns now, we will manufacture ourselves. But not only do we manufacture the crowns, we also design and manufacture the surgical guides. And we're able to do that entirely in-house with the equipment we have. So if we're thinking about the workflow for implants, um, instead of one scan, it starts with two. We have a CBCT scan. We have an intraoral scan and then in some magic software, we use Sedexis or the Cycat suite from Sedexis, don't spice around, are really easy to use. We merge the CT and we merge the intraoral scan. And on the intraoral scan, we've already put our crown restoration in its optimal position. And then using that software, we're able to design a surgical guide. 
and we can then either mill the surgical guide in the prime mill or we can print it in the prime print. If you're doing, that's uh, an example there of a um, milled uh, surgical guide and it takes about 25 minutes to mill it um, and those blocks cost about 45 pounds. If we were to print a guide or a stent, the material costs about three pounds. So these are all numbers you need to think about. And the actual workflow, I can tell you, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes maximum to do the CBCT, the intraoral scan and the designing and moving it between software packages. Um, it, yeah, once you've done this a lot, 15 to 20 minutes. And then of course the processing, I don't do any of it. I'm doing other things. I might be checking my emails. I might be seeing another patient. This is all done by the, the staff in the practice and they're very good at it. And they enjoy doing it as well. And we pay them to do it. So they're, they're happy from lots of different um, angles and perspectives. Um, this just gives you an example of the design process. I won't go to it into any detail. The reason the ID nerve is red there is because we've put an implant right through it. Always better to do this digitally rather than in real life. And then you can see the pictures at the bottom. Again, there's lots of red there, which means it's bad. It's a bit like crossing the streams on Ghostbusters. We don't want to do that. So um, this is where I do. I take a CT scan for every single patient. And you can chuck some questions at me about that if you want. I'm quite happy to discuss that another time. Drop me an email. Um, but this just gives you an idea of the software that we can use to design and place our implant digitally beforehand. And this helps me sleep at night. I'm not going to have any surprises when I do my surgery. If I have a surgical guide that we have manufactured, it's easy, really, really easy and slick. And I haven't got time tonight, but we can do immediate placement, immediate restoration um, and in a single visit, obviously, and we can do it all digitally. And it's a really slick, efficient workflow. And most importantly, it's great for your patients because they, they don't want to spend any more time with you than they do. I'm sure they all love you, but they'd rather be spending as little time as possible with you. So we can manufacture and design our surgical guides. We then place the implant and then we talk about the restorative side of it. And again, the preparation is actually just some digital impressions. And if you look in the second top left photograph there, we've got two different things in there. The gray things are called scan bodies and we can put scan posts or tie bases into the restoration. And those little gray things on there tell the scanner and the software, the orientation of your fixture, your implant. And then we're able to use the software again to design our um, crown. We always try and go for screw retain crown or we could manufacture a custom made abutment. Custom made abutments are very, very easy to do this way. So we can get our perfect emergence profile from day one. Really powerful again. Uh, they're milled, though you could print it if it was going to be a temporary crown. And then if you want to put some characterization on it, you can. The bottom left pictures, you can see the tie base there, which is what is screwed into the fixture. And the tie base is cemented to the crown. Very, very, very strong cement. In the early days, we probably all had problems with tie bases. I remember more, way more than 10 years ago, there were bond failures. Well, they've sorted that out now. The bonding system's absolutely brilliant. I can tell you of the thousands of screw retain crowns I've done, I've had two break, um, both um, for the same reason, both in Bruxelles, two out of thousands. It's a strong material and also um, it's an aesthetic material. Now, as it says here, fully digital, fewer visits, definitely. I mean, we, there's some, some workflows, depending on what we do, depending on the scenario, we can actually go from placement to finish in three visits. Okay, haven't got time to talk about that. Now you have to trust me, you can always contact me and I can explain how that's possible. Um, greater accuracy, well, the prime scan, it, it is still, it is the most accurate and the fastest scanner out there. And again, very happy to provide all the trials that are out there. There are dozens and dozens of refereed papers in the journals now comparing all the different scanners. And, and you know, trust me, you don't have to trust me. You can look yourself. Prime scan is the best one by a long way. It talks about 60 to 90 minutes for the restorative visit. Now you think, well, that's quite a long time. It is, but this is how it breaks down. They spend 15 minutes with me and we do the impressions. I will then design the crown which will take another five to 10 minutes maybe. Um, though the design, the software comes up with it is often very good. 
then I'm gone. I don't get involved with the next 45 minutes to an hour. The girls in the practice will do all the manufacturing, all the processing, and they will often do the characterization themselves. So during that time, I can, I've talked about checking emails before I can watch Netflix. There are other platforms available, obviously. Uh, I can drink tea. I can do emails, as I said. I can write, you know, I can write letters. The point is I can see patients. Yeah, so it's, it's a really flexible workflow. It makes my day easier. It makes my colleagues' day easier as well. There's no mess, as I said, there's no alginate, there's no silicon. And if on the day I think, do you know, I'm gonna to struggle to restore this. I'm going to get the lab to do it. I can just send off the impression and then something like Atlantis, which is a really nice system for custom-made abutments amongst other things, we can use that. So again, you've, still, you've always got the flexibility, you've always got the control. And that's, that's another great thing about doing it this way. So when we're sort of um, thinking about digital, as it says here, multiple workflows. I have not had time to talk to you about orthodontics, but there are fully digital workflows for orthodontics in our practice. That's what we do. We do short smile. I've talked very briefly about implantology. You can do fully digital workflows. I can produce, and we do produce pretty much all our single screw retained crowns. We used to do our implant bridges only up to sort of three um three units uh to be honest you learn quite stressful i used to have shoulder length hair started doing implant bridges it didn't go well the bridges were fine but it just wasn't worth it so again you learn so now the lab do all of my bridges and they do it beautifully because they are a fantastic laboratory brilliant laboratory but also they get really accurate impressions and really accurate information and if i'm doing full arches it's passive fit brilliant Absolutely, you know, it's so, so easy. Orthodontic, sure smile. Um, really nice system for aligners actually. And again, fully digital with the prime scan. I haven't talked about sleep appliances. We do the Panthera uh, snoring devices. Really simple, one, literally one set of impressions plus some other information that you send to our colleagues in Quebec. And then 10 to 14 days later, it's posted back. Very, very effective. Um, as it says there in green, it's an open system. Historically, CEREC was what we call a closed system, caused problems. It is now an open system. It will talk to other machines. It will talk to other design softwares. So it's very, very much better. We talked about the chair side workflow. We talked about the crowns. We do most of our bridges as well. And we can produce really well fitting aesthetic restoration is now very simple and i'm not involved with all of it as i said you know this is a really important thing you need to consider it makes a big difference to the your colleagues it makes a big difference to the girls that work at girls boys whatever that work in surgery with you um they get more involved and i can tell you in terms of staff retention they it's anecdotal, but they enjoy their job more because they get more job satisfaction um they get very um, tuned into the aesthetics of the crowns and bridges they're helping make um, and design. Um, our staff are going to be designing surgical guides soon once we get our new printer. The workflow, again, it keeps moving on, gets better and better. And um, as I say, the staff really enjoy it. Um, when you're thinking about purely digital impressions, we talked about making dentures, we talked about surgical guides. We talked about Michigan splints. You can do all of that purely digitally. So if manufacturing is not what you want to do, then you don't have to. Just have a good scanner like the Prime Scan and you're sending wonderful high quality information to your laboratory. So yeah, we can genuinely do it all with the CEREC system. We, we do try and do it all with the CEREC system. It's worked really, really well for us for a number of years. So we just need to sort of think about, you know, are there any benefits to the patient? Well, the picture in the middle probably tells you what one of them is. I have got patients who just cannot tolerate normal impressions. And so digital impressions are very much more uh, palatable, if you like, for want of a better expression, to those patients. One thing I didn't expect when we started doing this was that we, we get a few referrals, not we get referrals for the specialist things we do, but we get a few referrals from other practices saying, my patient needs a crown, they can't tolerate impression, would you do a digital one for them, please? 
and we're very happy to do that. And they know they're going to get the patient back because we're not like that. You know, we'll always send the patient back. And it's just, it's just another little add-on that actually I wasn't expecting. As it says there, less invasive. I hope I've demonstrated briefly that you can do the full range of treatment digitally and you can do it really, really well. We talked about the environmental factors and also um, there are patients genuinely, they look on our website and they are actively seeking digital practices now. At the moment, if you're doing things digitally, you're unusual, it's a, it's a USP, but it's going to become more and more common. And, you know, I remember seeing somebody very, a very good speaker saying, if you do dent in 10 years, you need to be doing dentistry digitally and you need to do it very well because everyone will be doing it. Now, the UK is interesting. I hope it's the case because it's much, much better for your patients doing it this way. You know, we talked about the dentists, fewer visits, you know, less invasive. They really don't want to be in the chair any longer than they have to be. So huge patient benefits. Um, the team, uh, that's, that's one of my nurses, Amy. She always smiles. It's not wind, it's just she smiles a lot. And um, Amy and some of the other girls, Charlotte, and a lot of the girls in the practice now, they like it for lots of reasons. There's less mess. You know, digital impression, as we talked about this, I'm laboring the point, it really matters. Alginate, silicon, don't touch the stuff apart from for an addition, so it's very rare. Um, we talk about the flexible day in the diary. Doing things digitally, if you remember we talked about a crown appointment, being 60 to 90 minutes, and it, it depends. And of course, with three mils, we can do three crowns in 90 minutes. Again, I'm not processing it. So the thing is, it's not just the nurses that like it because there's less mess and they get to make stuff. You also find that reception like it because they know that half an hour, probably, or thereabouts, into a, into a crown appointment or a prep appointment, um, they could probably put an emergency patient in. It's not a problem. We, you know, we clean down the surgery in two minutes, however long it takes. I don't get involved. It's far too complicated for me. Um, clean down the surgery. The crown, the bridge, whatever it is, is being milled or something's being printed. The patient that is waiting for that prosthesis or that restoration is either sitting in the waiting room. I say, bring a book or we'll give you the login for the Wi-Fi or some of them go and see the hygienist while the, their prosthetic is being manufactured. Um, and so there's flexibility there. So I might see an emergency or watch Netflix. The girls will be processing things and the patient will be seeing the hygienist all at the same time. That's really efficient use of time for me, for the, the girls in the practice, but also patients. They really love it. It's all been done in one visit. OK. And again, it gives me that flexibility in the diary. Says they're exciting and varied work. Yes, true. As I said, we do so much digitally, and you know, I'm a nerd when it comes to this kind of thing. And you know, seeing metal being printed, seeing things being milled, it's really quite cool. Uh, but it's also extremely good. And as I said, at the moment, it's kind of out of the ordinary. I hope in ten years it isn't, because really, really, you you know, my view is you should be thinking very seriously about doing this. Um, and yeah, the team, they are more involved. As I said, they, they get involved in making these things and they really enjoy doing it and they're very good at it. Um, whew, gosh, why do I like it? You know, I'm sure I haven't given the impression I enjoy doing things digi digitally yet, but just in case I haven't, um, it talks about a smooth workflow. It is, it is a really easy way of doing things. And since I've been doing things digitally, I would say that my days are easier and, and they are because again, squeezing patients in for an emergency is much, much easier. But also, I mean, if I see a day where I've got, say, four patients in for some crowns, that's a great day for lots of reasons as the business side, which we're going to come on to. But I know that for those four patients, I will probably work for two hours maximum. And that's quite nice. And, and you know, we're all busy, so it means I can do other things. The girls are doing the processing. That's great. As it says there, easy to book in emergencies. Accuracy. They've always been accurate. They've always fitted really well. Uh, people talk about the gold standard of bench top impressions and comparing it with that. Well, the Prime Scan compares with the gold standard way. The, the what I call the Flat Earth Society um, measure these things. The, the reality is in a patient who has a gag reflex, who is moving, um, you have saliva, which you control. 
but in the real world they are incredibly accurate. Um, yeah, the marginal fit is fantastic. The occlusion, single day dentistry, I mean the algorithms that the design software has in now are incredible. You, you can edit the restorations as I said and sometimes we do, but uh, they're very very good on the occlusion and the aesthetics. Dentures, we talked about dentures. Digital dentures, fantastic way of working. Half the visits you would normally have, half the time that you spend with the patient, and half the time they spend with you. Aesthetics, it was an issue. Um, it isn't anymore. We've got fabulous materials out there that we can use. Uh, we run courses to help people tint and glaze crowns. It's, it's a learning curve, but believe me, the more you do, the better you get. Um, we talked about fewer remakes. I mentioned the scenario before the... Oh, it should have been an A3.5 when we made you an A3. Literally it takes half an hour to correct that rather than making another temporary because you drilled the temporary off and waiting another two, three weeks. It just, it's just so much easier. Um, some of you will be creative. A lot of dentists um, like making stuff. They like doing things with their hands. Well, this is an opportunity to do even more and do it really, really well. And I can tell you, I, I know I'm better at my job because I do things digitally. If you can imagine seeing your prep about 12 inches across on a screen, you can see where the problems are with it. And your preps get better and, you, and, it, and it makes you realise, you know, what you could improve on. And it helps you improve because you can see in high detail what the issues may be. So... We're going to sum up now, but we're going to come up to the most important bit. Single visit, no impression, patient compliance, control, accuracy, yada, yada, yada. It's all there. We talked about it till we're blue in the face. Massive benefits to CEREC. But time for the second elephant in the room. Is it all worth it? Capital investment. This is the biggest issue that I hear. And they say it's an awful lot of money. I say, well, yeah, it's not cheap. And certainly if you buy quality material, it isn't cheap. And they say, well, OK, what about the lab? Well, we've talked about the lab. Labs love digital stuff. But one thing you will notice is that your laboratory fees drop through the earth. And I'll show you why in a minute. I can tell you that profitability really is improved because you're more efficient. And it's not just the time thing. The time thing is massive. If you're doing something in two visits rather than four, you should be more profitable. OK, I'm sorry, I don't need to explain that to you. But also now what you're finding is that because your business is more profitable and you're more efficient, your business is actually worth more. And the people that value businesses are very interested in digital practices because they know how that works. Let's look at some numbers. These are a bit old. I mean, implant crowns probably cost more than that, don't they? Surgical guide, well, 150 to 200 pounds if it's made by somebody like Psycat or Simplant. Michigan Splints Lab fees about £150. At the bottom, I haven't got time to talk about it, Tessera versus Emacs. The reality is because, uh, very briefly, Tessera takes about 15 minutes less time to process and complete than Emacs. OK, there are various reasons for that. Remember, it's stronger and it looks great. 15 minutes saved. If you imagine you do four crowns a week in one surgery, that's going to save you an hour. What's your hourly rate? Who knows? Say your hourly rate's £400 and you're saving £15. You're saving £100. There's another way of looking at it. The reality is if you're, if you're choosing the right block and efficient processing, um, I can show you the numbers. You will save yourself tens of thousands, tens of thousands of pounds across a year, particularly in a multi-surgery practice. It is quite staggering how much money you save or how much more money you can make because you've got more time to do it. Let's look at the real costs. A block for a crown, 15 to 25 pounds. A bridge block, about 50. An implant crown costs me about 100 pounds to make. It's a special kind of block and we have a tie base. Um, maybe 120, depending on what I'm using. Surgical guide, as I say, it depends on how much you pay for it from your lab. If you print them, it costs you about three quid. OK, Michigan Splint, same thing, three quid. And as I say, depending on what material you use, if you've got a more efficient workflow, you will be more profitable and more efficient. And don't forget, the staff, your colleagues do an awful lot of this. So it frees you up as well, makes your day better, also makes their day better. If we look at people talk about ROI, which means return on investment, apparently, um, you can spend quite a lot of money on this stuff. 
But if you buy what we might think a full system is the three amigos at the top, there's another thing in the picture there, don't worry about it. Um, so a prime scan, a prime mill, and a furnace called the uh, Speedfire. Um, if you were to pay on finance for that over five years now, and I know the suppliers are still keeping their interest rates at 4.75% apparently, which is amazing considering base rates is four and a half. You, for a full system, you're going to pay between 1,900 and 2,000 pounds a month. Now, if you look at those numbers at the top and you're just doing four crowns a week, now, of course, that doesn't mean per surgery. That's four crowns a week, full stop. If you've got two, three, four, five, six surgeries all doing things dent digitally, how many crowns are you doing in that practice? How many bridges? How many implant guides? How many implant crowns? How many splints? You know, you can see what the savings are. So those savings, if you're doing it digitally, will more than pay for the finance for the machines. I haven't even reminded you yet about the fact that you're only using two to three visits for a dentition instead of between four and seven. Or the fact that it's not just all about the money, it's about the fact that how much easier it is to work that way. Quality of life, really important, really improves. So I've been going on a bit, but I can tell you that we've been 25% uh, more profitable year on year um, for the last several years. And the more digital we got, the um, more profitable and the more efficient we got, but also the more we enjoyed our job. It's given me a new lease of life, um, which as I'm sure many of you will relate to in our profession, we need it, it's tough out there, but this makes it much easier. And hopefully just those numbers briefly have shown you that actually it really does pay. The cost of the system is not an issue. If you're not doing any dentistry, don't buy it. But if you're doing a routine amount of dentistry, make your life much easier and it'll make your patients happier, your staff happier, and you'll be more profitable as well. So, yeah, Steve Jobs, bless him. Most precious resource we have is time. Absolutely true. The Prime Scan and all the other bits and pieces of the Cerex system that go with it. Yeah, saves me a lot of time, makes my life much easier. As I said, you can do pretty much anything you want with Prime Scan. And, you know, as an added bonus, don't forget, it's going to help this as well. So with that, thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening and watching. If you want to know where the shirt comes from, put a question at the bottom of the page. And I'm going to invite Jamie back and we're going to have a bit of a Q&A. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Simon. That was very, very thought provoking and very inspiring, actually. It must be an absolute joy to work in your practice on a, on a day to day basis. And I think your, your team will feel the same as well. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they don't shout very often. So, you know. <laughs> it's just amazing to see how far the technology has come, actually. I mean, if you just look to this side here, conveniently, we have a beautiful Cerec 2 from our archive from the museum Ka from the early 90s, yeah. which is just absolute beauty. Yeah. So, incredibly, how far we've come from there up to, you know, our, our Cerec Prime scan. So, the technology is rapidly evolving, it's ever changing, it's just getting better and better and better. Now, with that being said, we've got plenty of questions in the chat box. I'm just conscious of the time and I want to get through as many as possible. So I do go on a bit. So, no, not at all. <laughs> Absolutely fine. Yeah. Perfect timing. We've got yeah. plenty of time. So, uh, we have a question here. What's the next development on the DS Core roadmap? I'm sure there's many cool things on the way. Uh, depends which country you're in is the answer to that. You probably know that as well as I do. Um, with beta testing in the UK, though, it's just becoming available. At the moment, DS Core is largely about sharing, isn't it? So Absolutely. images and what have you. But as we go forward, there's something called the patient canvas coming forward, which um, is a really nice way of showing your patients. If you want to show them your CT, if you want to show them their intraoral scan, restorations and all the planning, photographs as well you can put it all on one canvas and that's going to be really useful and, and trust me when patients they watch me doing the planning with the planning software and that's actually really powerful because they think they say you then it's thinking they say i didn't realize how much was involved in mm. doing an implant or doing a crown or a bridge and that gives them a better uh, feeling of value when they see just how much is involved and, and doing it digitally, they, they're very impressed with that. Yeah, and, and again, the communication, the acceptance from the patients, yeah. as soon as they see their scan live on one of the screens, it's so impressive and it really does enhance the communication. Uh, another question, what angle would you take to sell the move to digital to our practice manager? So I think someone's trying to sell digital to their practice manager here. So what angle Shia would you Shia LaBeouf, go onto Google and put just do it, yeah. okay? and watch the video because yeah, he just does do it you know and, and and 
I'm conscious that I won't ring everyone's bell, but um, <laughs> it makes every single person in the practice life better. It makes, the, as I say, the practice more profitable, more efficient. But actually, I really enjoy my job a load more than I did because I'm doing it digitally. And most importantly, with our, you know, the, the GDC, you're giving them a better product and better care because you're doing it digitally. If you do it well digitally, um, and it's not difficult to do it well, and of course, if people are going to be buying these things, we do new user courses, that way we do yeah. intermediate and advanced courses. There's a lot of support for these things. It's not a question of, here you are, crack on. Um, it, it, everybody wins, and you know the practice manager will win, if nothing else, because she's got less to deal with. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just makes everything simpler. Uh, another question that's just popped in. Um, what elements do you still use with your lab? So how do you still utilize the lab with the technology you've already invested yeah, in? Yeah, I mean, uh, prosthetics. I mean, ultimately, we might be able to print dentures. I honestly don't think we're going to do that. Yep. Our lab make beautiful dentures. So yeah, dentures, some guides, um, all implant bridges, more complicated restorative. I mean, we can do and we do do full arch uh, mm -hmm. work with our prime scan and the CEREC system. Um, but sometimes you just think, actually, now I'm going to get the lab to make those. Um, gosh, yeah, dentures, guides, splints, uh, implant bridges, you name it. Yeah. They, we, I mean, and as I said before, the lab love it. Yes. Because they get good quality impressions. So please do not worry, labs, that CEREC yeah. is your friend at the end of the day. It's yeah. not against you. Absolutely not. I was an ex-technician myself, so please do not worry and stress about it. It, it doesn't put labs out of work. No. It, makes, it makes, helps them be become more efficient, and it makes their life easier. And if they're more efficient, they're probably going to be more profitable as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, another question. Do you have a workflow for guided implants and the 3D printer? So how yes. convenient that we have. Yes, we do. <laughs> Uh, not the sort of thing I can answer in 30 seconds, but um, I mean, we run the two day course for that. Yeah. Um, but bottom line is, yes, we can with our CT, as I said before, and our intraoral scan, we can design and manufacture the guides for fully guided, semi guided, pilot only. And the workflow takes me about 15 to 20 minutes. And then I don't manufacture it. Mm -hmm. The girls manufacture it. It's really efficient, yes. really accurate. Then obviously we do everything digitally for the restorative phase as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Simon. Do you find patients are willing to pay more for a CT scan or do you consider it to just be a cost of delivering the dentistry? So I'll read that again. Do you find patients willing to pay more for a CT scan or do you consider it, to, it just a cost of delivering the dentistry? I'm, I'm not, I'll tell you, I'm not quite sure what that means, but it's yeah. been a long day. But um, CTs, I would uh, on the courses I run for implants, I say you need to take a CT for every case. And I'm happy to have a discussion with somebody that disagrees with me. CT for every case. Um, we charge a couple of hundred quid for a CT. Um, you can do courses through these people so you mm -hmm. can report your own CTs if you wish. But I think patients are genuinely impressed with the technology. But also when they see the planning that goes into it with the CEREC system and we have an Orthophos SL CBCT, the fact that they see on the screen in front of them merging images, doing a surgery on a computer, mm -hmm. that's very impressive. But it's also impressive can be rubbish, can't it? It's actually very reassuring for them. Yes. But also it for comes me, down to, yeah. I, it makes my job much easier. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I may not be answering the question, but hopefully it gives sure. them an insight. Yeah, hopefully. And can the Connect Scanner take colour, intra or photos? I can answer that very quickly. Yes, it can. There is a photo mode and a video mode within the uh, Connect software and Seric software, actually. Um, who in your team does the work and do your patients mind? The patients actually really like it. And I can tell you when, uh, because we'll discuss. I do some. Some of the upper anterior, single upper anterior crown, nightmare sometimes, really difficult. And the girls say, oh, you do it. And they're, they're, they're as good as me, if not better. I mean, they have very good eyes, but we will always discuss the aesthetics. And we'll even put some characterization on an upper seven, because the more you do this, the better you get. Some people will say, oh, I won't bother with an upper seven. Do it, do a little bit, because the more practice you get, the better. And we discuss that in front of the patient. And then I say to my patients, and also when I come to fit it, I'll say, oh, Amy made this. I designed it. I was in charge. No, no, no. Yeah, make a bit of a light-hearted comment. But I say, and, and I haven't had a patient yet that's pulled a face. They've all gone, ooh, that's yeah. really good. Genuinely, they have. There has not been an issue because the girls are trained properly. Yes. And the absolutely. girls quite like that. 
They yeah. like the recognition from the patient. That's what I love about it. You yeah. know, bringing the whole team together yeah. Yeah. and to, you know, the job satisfaction from the team, yeah. the staff retention as well. Because no one wants to lose staff and have to go for the rigmarole well, hiring staff, these which days. is yeah. extremely difficult. Yeah. Um, somebody wants to come and join you to see things in action. Yeah, I have a lot of visitors to the practice. <laughs> always, always, always happy to do that. We usually take them out for lunch as well. Don't all cure on us. But, Perfect. Uh, but, there we go. Um, That's your invite. Yeah, yeah, indeed. No, very happy yeah. to do that. And and there are people like me around the country as well. Isn't it? There'll be somebody in the yeah. EU that's really happy to show you how it works. Yeah. They so, may not take them out for lunch, but, you know. <laughs> Cup of tea at least. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was the name of that Facebook page again, please? Uh, keep on Sericking. Keep on Sericking. Yeah, so keep on Sericking is the name yeah. of the, the Ooh, Who page. asked that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Obviously a like-minded soul, yes. Uh, I think one more we've got time for. Uh, what percentage of UK practices do you think have gone digital? Now, I've got an idea of this. Have you? Yeah, 10 15% have an element of digital, I think. It's not yeah. a lot. It's I'd not a lot. It's slightly more than Has that. It gone up? I think it's about 30-odd percent. No. But it still doesn't seem a lot, does it? No, I don't believe you. Yeah. But that's elements of digital, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's not fully digital. I think it's a yeah, broad question, really. Have gone digital, so it can mean a number it, of things. It can mean but... anything. I mean, there are practices out there that just do intraoral scans. Yeah. And then there are other practices that do what we do. We do as much as we can, including yes. manufacturing. So I think from the scanning side, it's around 30%, yeah, for scanning it is, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. But that's soon to increase absolutely over the coming years. And I can envision... Um, you know, when every surgery will have an intraoral scanner eventually. Yeah. I'd like to see that as the... Uh... Yeah, that's, I, I hope so. And when you look at the new generation of the dentists coming out, of the new graduates coming out of dental school, I, was, I talk to people about this a lot, they all swipe left and right all, all day long. Yeah. And so there mm. may be an expectation, but they'll certainly hope that there's some digital elements to the workflow because that's their world. Yeah. That's what they're used to. Old so-and-sos like me, we have to learn these things. But for those old so-and-sos out there watching, it's actually really straightforward. <laughs> and there's lots of support from people like Jamie. Absolutely. As well. And that's we'll actually um, a nice segue into another question here. What kind of support is available? It's probably one of the most important. Yeah, the, the, lots is the answer. I mean, initially, the people you buy it from will support you. I can honestly say they're not twisting my arm. They're not they're not giving me a fast car these guys yeah absolutely these guys are really good dense by serona have a lot of digital specialists around and their knowledge is extensive and use them as a resource and also we do you know i'm not advertising i'm not selling you double glazing nothing wrong with selling double glazing but we do a lot of training courses and you know if you're going to get into this then make sure you come on the train some of them are free when you buy the equipment um but come on the training courses they're good fun yeah. and again they make your life so much easier Absolutely. Training courses are available, very comprehensive. So if you haven't already, feel free to join on to one of our courses. Just reach out to your local specialist. And someone wants to see you with uh, bangs. Is that, I guess that's relating to your hair length, potentially. Could be my hair length. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Very okay. kind. Kind so, offer. Yeah. yeah. Thank Always you very appreciated. Much for that. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think yeah. that about wraps it up for this evening. So now you'll be conveniently transported to a web page where you can book in a one to one consultation with one of our specialists. So really hope to see you soon so we can run through what Seric does, what it has to offer, and we can bring the machine with us, the Seric Prime Scan, to give you a bit of a glimpse on what can be achieved. So with that being said, thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much, Simon. Excellent presentation as thank normal. You. It's absolutely joy to hear you present. And thank you again. So good night and hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Bye.